Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This week, we are studying the last lesson in our summer quarter of Sunday School Lessons. We have been studying all month in the book of James. Have you ever known anyone who claimed to be wise, but who acted foolishly? Or think about a recent decision you made. Did you use godly or earthly wisdom? In this week's lesson, James is going to teach us about godly wisdom and earthly wisdom and about having patience. Get your Sunday school book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device and follow along as we begin our review of this week's lesson. Now let's get started. The lesson title for this week, August the 30th, is Wise Up. And that's the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School Commentary is Two Kinds of Wisdom. Our scripture text is James chapter 3 verses 13 through 18 and chapter 5 verse 7 through 12. And this is our background scripture as well. The key verse in this week's lesson is the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And that's James chapter 3, verse 17 in the New International Version. Questions to consider and reflect and think on as we go through this week's lesson are, number one, what does James say about godly wisdom and worldly wisdom. Question number two, why is it important for Christians to practice patience? And question number three, what is James implying when he says, let your yea be yea and your nay, nay? As we look at our lesson context for this week's lesson, we studied James chapter 3 verses 1 through 12 last week, focusing on the destructive powers of the tongue. James talked about the importance of controlling one's speech. We ended the lesson with James expressing the importance of bridling the tongue. This week's lesson talks about two kinds of wisdom, true wisdom and false wisdom. True wisdom is wisdom that comes from God and is the most important kind of wisdom to have. In James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, the first part of our scripture text, James gives the solution to the unbridled tongue problem. It is God's divine wisdom. James explains that heavenly wisdom is essential and that it guides us in our living. The kind of godly wisdom outlined here refers to the willingness to hear God, to obey God, and to follow God's commands. It is through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit that we gain insights into God's will and His desire for how He wants us to live. James chapter 5 verses 7 through 12 was James's message on patience and behavior while waiting on God. One of the purposes of the book of James was to develop Christian virtue in the lives of the early Christians who were scattered. The early church believers faced intense persecution. They lived at a time when worshiping God was literally a death sentence. Even though James was writing to encourage the early Christians, 
The book of James is rich with life applications for Christians today. It could be considered a how-to book on Christian living. James confronts and challenges each of us to godly and righteous living as presented in this week's lesson. This week's lesson aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Number one, explain the value of acting with wisdom from above and with patience in the midst of trials. Lesson aim number two, repent of actions that have been done out of earthly wisdom and lack of patience. And lesson aim number three, embrace wisdom from God and seek to demonstrate it consistently and patiently. As we continue our glimpse into this week's lesson, I am now going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are three outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book in this week's lesson. And they are outline number one, two kinds of wisdom. And that's James chapter three, verses 13 through 18. Outline number two is be patient and that's James chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. And outline number 3, act like it. And that's James chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. Now let's look at the first outline. Two kinds of wisdom. Key point number one. James writes that every deed is motivated by one of the two types of wisdom. Earthly or heavenly. True wisdom or godly wisdom comes from having a right relationship, a daily walk with the Lord. God gives true wisdom. God's wisdom is different from worldly wisdom. Those who are truly living God's wisdom won't be those who live self-centered lives, envious of others, as noted in verse 14. James is saying, don't brag about being wise and good if you are bitter and jealous and selfish. The source of false wisdom or worldly wisdom is the devil or Satan. Verse 16 reads, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. And that's the New International Version. James chapter 3 verse 17 tells about the positive characteristics of God's wisdom. And this leads to key point number two. God's wisdom is true, leading to peace. Worldly wisdom is envious and self-seeking. James used eight words or phrases to make his point as he talks about qualities of God's wisdom in verse 17. He is saying that godly wisdom is pure, it's peace-loving, it's considerate, it is submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, how we interact with others, and it is impartial and sincere. James is saying in verse 18 that those who accepted God's wisdom would live peacefully reaping a harvest of God's blessings. James explains that true wisdom originates with God. God's wisdom only comes from God. When we allow God's wisdom to reign in our lives, we will gain a different perspective on life, God's perspective. The second outline is be patient, and that's James chapter five, verses seven through nine. Our lesson moves to chapter five. In this chapter, James is teaching on the importance of believers having patience in the midst of suffering. As noted earlier, the early Christians faced much persecution, trials, and even death for their belief. Key point number one, 
James connected the idea of being patient in suffering with waiting on the Lord's second coming. James used an example of a farmer having patience on the outcome of his crop. In verse 7, James gives the comparison of the patience necessary in waiting for the Lord's coming with the patience necessary in waiting for the farmer's harvest. As stated in the Townsend Press commentary, both are sure, but both take time. After farmers plant their crops, they enter a waiting period. The farmer must wait patiently for the crops to grow. James was telling them to wait patiently for Christ's return, but while they wait, there is still much work to do to ensure a good harvest. James encouraged believers to have that same form of patience. This does not mean that they were to sit by idly doing nothing, rather to continue with endurance, bearing the burdens and fighting the battles until the Lord comes. They did not know when Jesus was returning and they did not need to be caught unready. As believers today, we too must stand firm in our faith and run this race with patience until the Lord returns for us, either through death or the rapture. Because we know He is coming back and we want to be ready when He returns. Until then, we must keep the faith and continue to work the works of Christ. Key point number two. Regardless of their circumstance, James called on believers to stand firm in their faith. James gives another example of patience and suffering. James shared about the prophets. Some prophets suffered and were persecuted. James used the example of Job in verse 11. Job was doubly blessed after his intense period of suffering. Key point number one, James reminded his listeners in verse 11 that the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. James closes this lesson in verse 12, which leads to key point number two. James admonishes his listeners not to swear. He was condemning the casual use of God's name as a guarantee that a person was speaking the truth. If believers lived lives reflecting God's wisdom, they would have no need to resort to such oaths. James is saying to say a simple yes or no. Let your yea be yea and your nay, nay. People would just take people at their word. Always be honest so others will believe your simple yes or no. In summary, we gain divine wisdom as we seek God through prayer. Godly wisdom offers to us guidance and direction when we are not sure which way to go. This lesson ends our summer quarter of Sunday School Lessons. Next week, we begin our fall quarter. We will be studying in the book of Genesis, chapter 37, the story of Joseph. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of the lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to teach and study God's Word. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.